Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. There's not going to be a regular mail and donations video this month because I simply haven't bought that much and uh, I haven't gotten any donations lately also so <laughs> can't do that but instead I'm uh, taking a look at this uh, big Commodore hall here. Yeah let's call it that. <laughs> I recently bought this uh, big box of Commodore goodies alongside a Commodore monitor. So let's go through all this together and see what I got. I haven't checked anything out. I don't know the status of any of the things. So uh, I'm just as curious as you are uh, on what I got here and if it works or not. Alright, let's check out the first item and it's this one, it's a Commodore 1701 monitor and uh, this looks very nice. I never had a monitor for my machines back in the day, I always used an old TV. This is a color monitor that was made uh, to be sold uh, with the Commodore 64 and the 128 and uh, the model 1701 is uh, pretty similar to the model 1702. It has a video and uh, audio out here and uh, yeah, let's see if there's something here. Yeah, there's a lot of picture adjustments there and luckily the lid is still intact. <laughs> So this has adjustments for tint, color, brightness, contrast, horizontal and vertical position and hold and volume because it has built-in speaker. On the back side we can see Commodore model 1701, 220 volts, 78 watts and here it has audio and uh, Luma and Chroma inputs. So if you know how the video output on the Commodore 64 is, it, it actually has dedicated Luma and Chroma signals on the video port and uh, yeah that's actually this one. The regular DIN connector for the Commodore 64 video output and that's uh, the same as an S video signal in fact. So not a lot of connections on this one and uh, it doesn't handle <laughs> many types of video signals. It is an analog monitor and as you have seen I'm usually using my uh, LCD TV. So it will be exciting to check out this one and see some old analog Commodore 64 <laughs> games on it. If it's working, <laughs> I really don't know. The seller claimed that it was working. That remains to be seen. The 1701 came before, for example, this one, that's 1084. And this one was primarily made to be used with Amiga machines. I just let the monitor stand there on my desk for now and we'll test it a little bit later. But first, let's take a look at the contents of this big plastic box. First of all, we have this one. It's a boxed single floppy disk drive. That's a 1541 floppy disk drive. Next is this one. <laughs> a very nice looking boxed Commodore 64. Always nice to find those machines uh, in the original box. Uh, you know, there's so many machines out there and uh, Many of them are just standalone machines without nothing. But having a complete one is uh, always uh, nice. Then we have some software. In fact, a bunch of different uh, cassettes and floppy disks. A cassette recorder. I have a lot of those, but not that particular model. Phone mark. Also, I got this one, the Mutant Spider. 64 
finally some uh, floppy disks and uh, books and documentations, user's manual for uh, the monitor, the Commodore 64 user manual, introducing the Commodore 64 machine code. Okay, that's a, that's kind of a cool book. The programmer's reference guide using uh, the 64 Peter Gerard and 60 programs for the Commodore 64. All right, so that was uh, a lot in <laughs> one go. I bought all this at the same time from the same seller and I paid around 300 euros for it all totally and it was a local seller so I just picked it up here <laughs> let's see what kind of software I got these are the originals that came with the machine it's always nice to have some originals Cybertron Revenge of the Mutant Camels Assembler 64 from Interceptor Software on cassette <laughs> Zodiac Turbo Flight Path 737 Then here we have the disc version of a Spitfire 40 And Flight Simulator 2, nice! That's a, that's a really a nice one I don't think I ever tested the flight simulator uh, on uh, the Commodore 64, so that's something we're gonna test uh, in this video. And then we have a uh, fighter pilot. What I'm gonna do now is to set up uh, the Commodore 64 um, and the floppy disk drive and uh, hook up the monitor and check that everything is working. And if it is, then we're gonna check out some of the games and stuff. And if it's not working, then we need to figure out what's wrong, obviously. The machine. Oh boy, it's quite dirty and uh, quite yellowed or greenish <laughs> power supply i'm not gonna risk testing with that i'm gonna use a modern one the seller said that the machine was working but that he hadn't tested the, the floppy drive because he couldn't find the cable i guess he meant the serial cable then Okay, it even has uh, the user's manual in Norwegian. Okay, the drive's looking uh, very nice and uh, not uh, yellowed or anything, but uh, has a little um, damage there. So hopefully this hasn't taken a, a hit to the floor, but there were no cables with it. This is kind of fun, hooking up the old equipment from back in the day. Complete set with the monitor and the real floppy disk drive. Serial cable there. I'm using this uh, modern power supply instead of the old one because the old ones can have failed already and um, yeah damage the machine all right everything is hooked up just gonna wipe a little bit of this screen it's a little bit dusty but um, yeah let's turn it on first i'm gonna turn on the floppy disk drive because I learned back in the day, you should turn the floppy drive on before the computer. And the red light turns off. That means that it initialized correctly. Then the monitor. Okay, I can hear the humming. A little bit the spark sound. Yeah, you can hear the static. All right, let's turn on the machine. Mm, nothing. There's light in the LED, but the machine isn't working. 
However, the floppy drive initialized when I turned on the machine, and I think that's an indication that the machine is uh, working. Let's see here, maybe the adjustments are way off. Nope. Look at that! Yeah, <laughs> I got the picture. Oh, I actually was afraid that this uh, monitor wasn't working because I couldn't get the picture. So I hooked up another machine. It's uh, standing um, <laughs> over there. <laughs> uh, known working Commodore 64 and still wouldn't work. So I tried different uh, things here and then I just started to, yeah, <laughs> pulling the cables for the Luma and Chroma in and out a bit. There's also a signal selector back there and uh, boom, suddenly there was a picture. So it's not very stable, but I uh, guess that's the sink. Yeah, ooh, nice. <laughs> kind of noisy, uh, the speaker uh, for the audio. And it's looking terrible now on the camera, but uh, now it's kind of stable and nice picture. So that's the best I can get it with uh, this setting on the camera. And uh, yeah, it has to do with the shutter speed versus the refresh rate on the screen. Yeah, but the monitor is working a little bit uh, scratchy uh, potentiometers and uh, yeah, the sound uh, has a lot of noise. So I guess that uh, will be a candidate for uh, trying to restoring this uh, monitor and uh, maybe recapping it with new caps. Uh, see if that's going to improve it. Anyway, that was uh, this machine. I'm going to test this one now. Oops. Let's see now. Yes, it works. Very nice. <laughs> So I managed to uh, adjust the camera so that I can get at least a little bit stable uh, recording of the screen, but it is uh, kind of uh, light. That was the monitor and the machine. Let's check out uh, this floppy disk drive. And this is a regular old 1541 single-sided floppy disk drive. I had one of these myself back in the day when I had the Commodore 64 and uh, it worked great. It is a little bit slow, but uh, that can be fixed with some uh, dirty tricks and fast loaders. So does the keyboard work? Okay. Yes. Oops. Not. Yeah need to press really hard on the dollar sign. Probably one of the most used uh, keys if you only were loading <laughs> stuff from uh, <laughs> disk. Yeah, look at that. Floppy disk drive also works. Let's see if we can load the whole game then. Keyboard obviously needs some attention and uh, restoration. Oops. It didn't load, it just hangs. So maybe there's something with this machine. Hey, look there. I obviously didn't read the, <laughs> the manual. You're supposed to write the load Spitfire, comma eight, comma one, and now it loaded. Okay, we're in. <laughs> Not really sure how to play this game and uh, yeah, I can steer and things, but I think I need to... Um, okay. <laughs> how do I take off? There's the cannon. All right, the thing works. Very nice. I'm very pleased with that. Oh boy, how I want to clean up this machine. It's kind of dirty. <laughs> As you can see, and uh, yeah, look at all that yellowing. 
Uh, let's check out this cartridge here. It's uh, the Mutant the Spider 64. <sighs> okay. Nope, didn't work. Okay, there you go. The Mutant Spiders. Do you want to load the same game? No. What shall I do now? Is this an adventure game? Look, what shall I do now? Get up. <laughs> okay, so um, that seems to be some kind of um, yeah, terrible noise. That seems to be some kind of text based adventure game. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna run the diagnostics cartridge. I have. Uh, install the, the testing harness uh, you can see it here and uh, yeah just gonna check that everything works okay with this machine yeah it's running flashy running <laughs> i'm a little bit curious if uh, the seed chip is working that we get any sound yeah i hear sound through the noise but uh, it's very faint, but at least uh, the seed chip is functioning. <laughs> Although the sound is very faint through all the noise in this monitor. <laughs> okay, the diagnostics test just hung on um, the second try. And as you can see here, it's a C6 uh, at, <laughs> not 64. So uh, I think maybe this machine has some issues. I'm just gonna try and restart it again and see. Yeah, now it says C64. But then again, you see this uh, asterisk here stuck on the middle of the screen and now it just hangs again. Yeah, it just uh, stops uh, at random positions uh, on the screen RAM test. So uh, yeah, maybe there's a faulty uh, RAM chip in this machine. Starting to show up now when it's uh, getting used. It might be just a dirty um, <laughs> cartridge port here. I'm gonna spray with some contact cleaner and then let's check again. So cleaning the cartridge port, uh, well, it now run past the screen RAM and um, it just hangs on the call RAM test. So. Obviously, something's not correct here. It shows uh, random errors, but uh, all has to do with RAM, so that's a bit strange. Machine seems to function uh, 100%. And you can hear the music from this uh, Donkey Kong cartridge. <laughs> All right, I think I tested the, the monitor uh, enough. I now know it's a little bit scratchy and uh, needs a bit of servicing. So I'm gonna remove it for now and get back my uh, <laughs> LCD TV instead and uh, then continue with the testing. Ah, that's better. Yeah, now the, the sound is okay. I mean, maybe a little bit low, but uh, yeah. Good enough. I took out the cassette recorder, but it's uh, not the same as uh, on the box. This is a regular old Commodore cassette recorder. Still, I'm gonna test that it works. And uh, yeah, the Revenge of the Mutant Camels original tape. Let's uh, check that out. One of the issues with this uh, Commodore cassette recorder is that it sometimes can start eating tape. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we don't want that, but uh, yeah, seems like it's uh, dragging around uh, pretty well. Yeah, look at that, phone revenge. Then that's working too, just needs a bit of cleaning. It's very dirty and dusty. Yeah, look at that. The camels are here.
Yeah, yeah, I'm getting the hang of it. You need to, I mean, you jump and then you shoot in uh, <laughs> some direction, all four directions. <laughs> Cybertron. No, that did not work. It just hangs. Black screen. You know, loading tapes on the Commodore 64 back in the day before um, turbo tape uh, <laughs> arrived uh, was a real pain. You could sit and wait like 10 minutes and uh, that's how it feels now. I have been waiting for several minutes now and no visual clues on the screen or anything. And then it doesn't work like this and you have to retry and <laughs> yeah, that was how it was back in the day. Let's try this Zodiac. I mean, it could be all kinds of reasons why um, that tape didn't load. It can obviously be something with the machine. It is a little bit marginal because that uh, diagnostics um, cartridge had a problem, but uh, then again, some things work and some don't. I mean, it could be the cassette recorder is a little bit um, dirty and needs a little bit uh, alignment. Found Zodiac. Yeah, that loaded. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember this game. I don't think I have ever seen it before. Seems a little bit um, yeah, simple. <laughs> Shoot some things, pick up other things, and you never know what you're gonna get. What? Why did I die there? Well, this was a, a shitty game. I didn't like it at all. Let's try this one. Fighter Pilot Commodore 64. I can't say I remember this. Um, it's an F-15 flight simulator. It has a Norwegian um, instruction sheet here. Only the best will become a fighter pilot. Climb into the seat of the world's most exciting aircraft. Stunning 3D graphics, air-to-air -air combat and fully aerobatic performance put the challenge of real-time flight simulation at your fingertips. No, that must be a good game. <laughs> Load star 0.8.1 Oh, either it won't print the character or it prints it double. So uh, this keyboard is needing some cleaning. Colorful. Okay, let's see. I want to practice air-to-air -air combat. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. How do I arm uh, the gun? That's the most important question here. Ah, it's kind of cool. So I'm almost at the ground now. <laughs> Let's see if I can uh, crash into the runway. <laughs> this is the landing practice. 
I have no idea about um, how to change speed or yeah anything. <laughs> Just see the runway over there. Well, well, I'm pretty sure it's a cool game if I just um, read the instructions, which I didn't do. Next thing I want to try out is this one, the Flight Simulator 2, and it's uh, made by Sublogic, and it's uh, a pretty thick manual here. Flight physics and aircraft control, and... Uh, yeah, I wonder if this is the same flight simulator that um, Microsoft made back in the day for uh, the PC. Or if this is something completely different, I think I need to figure out that. And uh, yeah, there's a floppy disk there. It says uh, in flight uh, New York. That was... Um, not the game disc, this is the game discs, and this is a, a approach to Mages Mode 11. I think these are saved games. This is the actual um, game disc. Let's load it. <laughs> it actually prints the load time, <laughs> 2 minutes and 40 seconds. In the meantime, I can check out some of uh, the documentation. There's some uh, yeah, airport maps, or what do you call it? Santa Monica and uh, Los Angeles International. Martha's Vineyard and Norwich, Providence. So yeah, seems to have a lot of airports. So here's the controls. Seems to be using a control key and uh, the joystick. Flight reference card and um, here's the pilot's operating uh, handbook and airplane flight manual. So, it seems to be fairly advanced for the Commodore 64. And here you need to select if you're using a color TV or a black and white TV. Let's try a demo mode just to see what it can do. Looks a lot like uh, the flight simulator for the PC, in fact. So now it's taking off. So the frame rate on this, what is it? 0 0.5 FPS, something like that. Or maybe 1 FPS. Well, this isn't a game that you just uh, start playing. You need to study the manual and uh, yeah, there's a lot of controls and stuff. So not gonna go into details on that now. That <laughs> I think maybe this uh, could warrant a complete episode of its own. If uh, any of you guys are interested in that, I might uh, make one. A complete episode on the Flight Simulator 2 for the Commodore 64. Just testing one of the floppy disks that uh, has some games on it. <laughs> the Catlon. This is not easy with a joypad like this. I think you really needed a good joystick and also I think it's the, in the wrong port. <laughs> yeah, now it works. Yeah, I can. I can run. Come on, run. Oops. <laughs> I missed the button. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> 3.6 meters, shot putt. Okay, I think that's it for this video. <laughs> A great uh, collection of Commodore stuff and uh, 
everything is working just fine but it is in a great need of some uh, restoration work and uh, yeah i think you're gonna see this stuff sometime later in some other videos uh, gonna do some future proofing and cleaning up of these things and uh, obviously that Sentina one monitor needs to yeah maybe get some new caps or um, yeah some uh, maintenance at least so hope you enjoyed this video and uh, as usual thanks a lot for watching and a special thanks to my patrons see you next time bye bye